Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture, Composite Restorations. Learning Outcomes, Explain Polymerized Shrinkage and Methods to Reduce Polymerization Shrinkage. Point out the indication, contraindication, advantages and disadvantages of composite restorations. Explain three designs of tooth preparation for composite restorations. Explain the principles and factors affecting the adhesion and the agents used for bonding to enamel entity. Explain and perform the clinical procedure for composite restorations. Composites. Composite is a compound of two or more distinctly different materials with properties that are superior to intermediate to those of the individual constituents. So in the industry, composites are widely used aesthetic restorative material over a long period. So the components of dental composites include resin matrix, organic or inorganic fillers and coupling agents. So the resin matrix that is bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate and the filler particles are silica, quartz and glass. So silica and quartz and parts basically the resin filler particles are reinforcement for the matrix resin and resulting in increased hardness, strength and decreased wear. And it also helps in reduction of polymerization shrinkage. Whereas coupling agent, it is a bonding particle between the filler and the resin. So that is about the composition of composite. Indications. So composites are used for all kinds of restorations, foundation or core buildups in case of root canal treated tooth pit and fissure sealants so basically it is used for sealants and conservative composite preparations as it does 1 and 2 then aesthetic enhancement procedures veneers tooth color modifications my diastema conscious periodontal splinting and orthodontic bracket placement so basically it is used for all type of fillings so the major one today in clinics we are using restoration is based upon composite because no amalgam is no more used in our dental clinics and sometimes we use glass enormous cement but most of the time we go for a permanent restoration that is composites coming to the contraindication when the operating site cannot be appropriately isolated if all of the occlusion will be on the restorative material or in restoration that extend onto the root surface so basically we don't have much contraindications if it cannot be isolated because you know it is a technical technique sensitive material so uh, if you are not able to isolate it is con contraindicated sorry then if the occlusion is completely onto the composites then it's very difficult to stay there then if it is onto the root surface so these all are the contraindications coming to the advantages first one aesthetics because it's a tooth colored restoration then conservative tooth structure removal that means less extension uniform depth not necessary mechanical retention usually not necessary because there is not much cavity preparation required for the composite remove the caries adequate depth is required then after that you can continue with the restoration micro mechanically it bonds to the tooth surface then less complex when preparing the tooth as i said there is not much tooth preparation remove the caries the preparation is dictated by the caries then insulative lo having low thermal conductivity then used almost universally as i said it is used for a long period as well as it is commonly used as a permanent filling then bonded to the tooth structure micro mechanically and resulting in good retention low micro leakage minimal interfacial staining and increased strength of remaining tooth structure and it can be repairable so these all are the advantages coming to the disadvantages more technique sensitive as i said you have to edge prime bond and restoration need to be done and it is time consuming then costly comparable to silver amalgam 
and may exhibit greater occlusal wear in areas of high occlusal stress or where all the two occlusal contacts are on the composite material that was one of the contra indication so you all know that amalgam is stronger than composite but aesthetic wise composite is better and having a higher linear coefficient of thermal expansion resulting in potential marginal percolation if inadequate bonding technique is utilized so that completes the disadvantages first one is conventional bevel conventional and modified so coming to polymerization shrinkage on curing shrinkage takes place in such a way that the restorative material is pulled away from the cavity wall resulting in gap formation this is referred to as polymerization shrinkage the polymerization shrinkage usually does not cause significant problems with restoration cure in preparations having all enamel margins so that is about polymerization shrinkage the polymerization shrinkage means basically when the composite gets cured it results in a gap between the restorative material and the tooth surface basically the composite shrinks that is polymerization shrinkage coming to the configuration factor so the c factor is the ratio of the bonded surface to the unbonded or the free surface in a tooth preparation the higher the c factor the greater is the potential for bond disruption from polymerization effects methods to minimize polymerization shrinkage that includes modification of placement technique curing technique use of stress absorbing liners and preheating so incremental layering technique that is one technique of placement by using a incremental technique the bonded to unbonded ratio would be reduced and consequently the stress level within the cavity might be lower and preserving the bonded area so you can reduce the polymerization shrinkage then secondly curing technique so when the composite resins are cured if inadequate levels of conversions are achieved during the polymerization it may result in shrinkage so the curing composite in 2 mm increments is recommended and also a soft start polymerization instead of a high intensity light curing so that is the curing technique you can modify then use of stress absorbing liners so the use of a flowable resin composite as an intermediate thin layer has been suggested as a mean to overcome the polymerization shrinkage then comes the preheating so preheating the composite has been advocated a method to increase the composite flow improving the marginal adaptation and monova conversions so by using this method you can reduce the polymerization shrinkage coming to the adhesion that is enamel adhesion so bunokor in 1955 introduced the acid etch technique for the adhesion of resin to the tooth so acid etching transforms the smooth enamel into irregular surface and increases its surface free energy so when a fluid resin based material is applied to the irregular etched surface the resin penetrates into the surface and aided by capillary action so the monomers undergo polymerization and the material becomes interlocked within the enamel surface the formation of the resin micro tags with the enamel surface is the fundamental mechanism of the resin enamel adhesion so after as etching placement of the bonding agent then you place the composite so after the as etching there will be micro porosity is formed onto the enamel surfaces into that the resin that is the bonding agent will go in and lock and creates the enamel micro resin tax and that is the mechanism of resin enamel adhesion so we talked about acid etching presently a 37 percentage concentration of phosphoric acid is used as a etchant for 15 to 20 seconds acid may be available as a liquid or gel form gel etchants are preferred due to the better control in placement over the enamel surface 
so the mechanism of etching and etch patterns so acid etching converts smooth enamel into a very irregular surface with a high surface energy it removes 10 neuron of surface enamels and creates a micro porous layer which is 5 to 50 neuron deeper so microscopically three types of etch patterns have been described so type 1 is dissolution of the prism cause leaving the prism peripheries intact Type 2 is dissolution of the prism peripheries leaving the prism core intact. And type 3, no prism structures are evident. So basically after the acid etching, it converts the enamel surface into a very irregular surface which can be up to a layer, deeper layer of 5 to 50 New York. So bonding agent flows into the micro porosities of the enamel surface and when the polymerized by light activation from form resin tags which lock them into the enamel surface. So the bond strength of composite resins to its enamel is in the range from 15 to 25 megapascal. So in the picture you can see first one is the unetched enamel rods and enamel rods showing micro porosities after the etching and enamel bonding agent goes into that porosities and creates the resin tags and composite is placed on top of it so that is how the mechanism of addition between enamel and the tooth surface so dentin addition cut dentinal surfaces forms a unique structure called as the smear layer it is composed of debris of hydroxyapatite crystals and denaturated collagen so the removal of smear layer and the smear plugs with acidic solutions will result in an increase of fluid flow onto the exposed dentin. So the dentin addition primarily relies on the penetration of the adhesive monomers into the collagen fibers left exposed by acid etching. Dendin bonding agents. So during 1950s, it was reported that the resin containing glycerol phosphoric acid dimethacrylate could bond to a hydrochloric acid etched dentin surface. So the bond strength of this adhesive addition techniques were severely reduced by immersion in water. So bonding agents can bring a strong bond between the composite and the tooth structure to withstand the mechanical forces and stress. So bonding agents consist of different dimethacrylates from the composites with diluting monomers and to control viscosity as to improve setting. So it also includes etchants, resin, monomers, solvents, initiatives, inhibitors and fillers and other ingredients. So the bonding agents are classified into seven generation. First generation. So that is N-phenyl glycine glycerin methacrylate, a surface active co-monomer. Co-monomer is considered as the first generation dentin bonding system. Both in vitro and in vivo clinical studies shows very discouraging results. Examples are Servidan. Second generation, they are phosphate ester material. Mechanism of action is based on the polar interaction between the phosphate group and the calcium in the smear layer. The smear layer was weakest link in the system because of its loose attachment with the dentine. And the bond strength was also poor, less than 10 megapascal. They show less wettability and penetration into the dentine. Example is clear fill bond, scotch bond. Third generation. The third generation dentin adhesives attempted to deal with the smear layer in two ways, either by modification of the smear layer to improve its properties or by removal of the smear layer by keeping the smear plugs intact. Fusayama et al. in 1979 introduced the concept of phosphoric acid etching of dentin prior to the use of phosphate as the type bonding agent. The removal of smear layer is using chelating agents such as EDTA. Example is clear fill. Scotch bond to Gloma system. Fourth generation. This is commonly known as total etch technique or the etch and risk technique. It consists of three components. Phosphoric acid etching gel that is rinsed off. A primer containing a reactive hydro philic monomer in ethanol acetone or water and a unfilled or a filled resin dentin bonding agent. So the acid treatment not only alters the 
mineral content of the dentin substrate but also alters the surface free energy when primer and bonding agents are applied to the etched enamel etched dentin they penetrate the intra tubular dentin forming a resin dentin interdiffusion zone or a hybrid layer examples are scotch bond so in the first picture you can say the dentin prepared with the smear layer so second one after the etching you can see exposed collagen fibers then the primer and adhesive is applied along with the composite you can see the hybrid layer consisting of dental adhesive and composite fifth generation these are adhesives are a simplified version of the fourth generation adhesives also known as one bottle system the primer and adhesive is combined in one bottle a separate etching step is still required though they require fewer steps to achieve the dentin bonding system bonding these agents are inferior to the fourth generation bonding agents in terms of the bond strength so the difference between the fifth and fourth is that fourth you are doing etching priming and adhesive application here primer and adhesive in one and you have to do the etch so this is two step and that one is totally just four step so the example for the fifth generation is single bond coming to the sixth generation they are also known as sep that is self etching primers they are available in two forms first one is self etching primers etch and primer in one bottle while adhesive in a separate the first etch and primer are applied onto the tooth surface which is then followed by the application of a adhesive etching example is clear fill sc bond second is the self etching adhesives in this the etch and primer and adhesive are all in one packet but requires mixing before application of the tooth structure so that is the two types one comes with etch and primer in one bottle and then comes the adhesive whereas the second one all comes together one package but mixing is required example is prompt elbow coming to the seventh generation that is also known as all in one adhesive system these are the most recent generation of dentin bonding agents they combine etch and primer and adhesive in one bottle they do not require any mixing prior to the application so the difference between the 6th and 7th is that they come in one bottle but 6th one requires mixing here doesn't requires any mixing so primarily these bonding agents are intricate mixtures of hydrophilic and hydrophobic components in one bottle their bond strength is less than 4th and 5th generation adhesive so out of this 7th generation 4th generation has a good bond strength that is about 25 megapascal then comes the 5th so then only the 7th generation comes so one more generation is the that is the eighth generation that is not i mentioned here because uh, it's not that much relevant that textbooks are not saying so it is basically the eighth generation bonding agents that is inclusion of the nanoparticles into the agent bonding agent so basically that gives much more flow sorry it reduces the flow but it gets more addition but still it is lesser than the total edge concept so that's about the bonding agents now comes to the clinical procedure for composite restoration so basically you know how to do a composite so first step shade selection then comes the isolation of the operating site tooth preparation application of each and dentin bonding agent matrix placement and placement of composite basically composite build up that three you can say then final one is finishing and polishing so we are talking about the clinical techniques so as i said first you have to take the shade that is the shade selection you have to uh, compare with the tooth structure by using a vita guide shade guide and make sure the right shade you have selected then secondly you have to check the contours and the occlusion of the tooth before for the tooth preparation so in this picture you first picture you can see there is a caries on 5 so you should have a idea how you are going to build up the tooth so the proximal box is 
you can see the proximal side you have to prepare a good preparation and after that you have to build it up so you have to get an idea how to prepare the composite and how to build it up in such a way that you should get the proper contact and contour so next that isolation after the occlusal check the rubber dam isolation is done this will provide a better view and uh, access for the preparation while maintaining a contamination free environment so once the isolation is done you can move on to the tooth preparation so basically it has three steps one is the access and second is the removal of caries and finishing of the cavity as i said that is design of the cavity it completely dictated by the caries so basically you have to make sure that you remove the caries completely and finish the cavity so the finishing the cavity using a fine burr is always very important for better seal between the tooth and frustration so once you prepare with a round burr or whichever burr we are using make sure a fine burr to use the margins to clear off the uneven enamel or the uneven tooth surface then once it is done you go for the restoration of the tooth that includes first the acid etching that can be done to for 10 to 15 seconds if the enamel dentine is involved if only the enamel is involved you can etch for a longer period because the etchant has to penetrate the enamel and to create the microporosity so you can etch for a 30 seconds to create the inter increase the surface area and to aid in micromechanical retention then comes the application of the adhesive and cure it for 20 seconds to improve the bond strength between the composite and the tooth structure then comes the build up it can be done in small increments of 2 mm it can be in the form of whichever layering technique you can use that is horizontal vertical oblique so whichever technique you are familiar you can use it and slowly you build it up so that is one way you can reduce the polymerization shrinkage so if the poly uh, if the proximal wall is missing it is restored using a metric system so first the placement of metric system followed by the wedges and the height of the matrix is very important to obtain a proper marginal ridge after the proximal wall is restored the occlusal morphology is created following the anatomy of the tooth so that's why i said before starting the case only you should have a idea about the occlusal morphology of the tooth once you have done with the build up of the composite then you can continue with the finishing and polishing so don't build the composite uh, out of the if you are for example if you are taking the uh, marginal ridge don't build too high because later you have to trim a lot so make sure you should have a correct idea about how much you have to build it up so the finishing of the restoration is done using with a fine grit burst so make sure the occlusal anatomy is nicely nicely carved with the help of the burr so the occlusal check is performed using articulating paper again and it should be made in static and also in dynamic positions so if there is no high point then you can go for the polishing using polishing stones that can be in the smooth white stones or you can use the soft flex system so that's about the clinical technique for preparation of composite i hope everyone understood that if you have any doubts contact me thank you